Welcome to another VCE Physics coaching video. And today we're looking at gravitational fields. So this is in the first area of study in unit three physics in year 12. So uh, any massive object has a force field around it and that's the force of gravity, which is a relatively weak force overall compared to the other three fundamental forces, the nuclear force, strong and weak nuclear force and electromagnetism. So it takes a lot of mass to notice gravity. So uh, it is noticeable though, even with small masses. So experiments have been performed where even small masses will be attracted to each other uh, and that can be measured. So we're gonna look at the gravitational field of the earth to start with. And I'm gonna draw a, just a circle to represent the earth. Well, there we go. So, um, that means on the surface of the earth, there's a force of gravity holding you, uh, attracting you to the earth. And it's every atom of the earth attracting every atom of your body. So just want to get a feel for what the force of gravity would feel like. It means if you go a certain distance from the earth, you'll be attracted back to the earth. So imagine, you know, I've got well positioned trampolines around the earth. So it's boing. Boing. And if you go to the side, boing, boing. Notice what's happening there? You're orbiting the Earth. This was similar to a thought experiment Isaac Newton did. Boing, boing, boing. So you can almost go right around the Earth. And in fact, at the right speed, boing, you get boing. You'll never land. You'll go into complete orbit. And the orbit of this International Space Station takes about 92 minutes to orbit the Earth at an altitude of about 400 kilometers. So at the surface of the Earth, the gravitational field strength is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. And we'll look now at the formula for calculating gravitational field strength. That's G equals G, the universal gravitational constant divided by R squared, that's its distance from the planet. So the, the force of gravity does exist in space, to say no, it's not just at the surface of the earth. So if we plug in the numbers or substitute for the earth, the universal gravitational constant is 6.67 by 10 to the minus 11 newtons, uh, newton meters squared per kilogram squared, multiplied by the mass of the earth, which is 5.98, so almost six, by 10 to the 24 kilograms. Well, you might be curious, now, how do we know that? That the earth is uh, almost six by 10 to the 24 kilograms. Okay, so then we divide that by whatever radius we are from the earth. So if we're standing on the surface of the earth, well, that just happens to be a radius of 6,400 kilometers. To, okay, so, uh, or 6.38 by 10 to the six, meters so we've got to use meters but i might use 6400 kilometers there actually and just to convert that kilometers to meters that's 10 to the power of three and remember to square the examiners uh, from year to year say that students occasionally forget to square when calculating a value like this and if you plug that into your calculator you'll get a figure of 9.8 newtons per kilogram Okay, so check my working. If I've not done that, comment into the comments. But uh, that's what we understand the value to be. That's G at the surface of the Earth. If we go uh, further out from the Earth, it'll drop off. So 400 kilometres above the Earth, it's about 8.9. That's the uh, radius of International Space Station, which is due to be decommissioned in the coming years talking about the next generation of space stations. We're talking about uh, space tourism. There's about five companies at the moment uh, looking to place uh, orbiting hotels, if you like, um, and uh, tourist type facilities in orbit that are coming in. So uh, that's uh, how we calculate G. Uh, G for other planets. For example, Mars could be calculated if we know uh, the mass of the central body, Mars. Uh, and if we know the radius of Mars, so it's a little bit less for Mars, 
Um, the moon has one sixth the gravitational field strength um, of the earth. All right now, what I want to look at here, um, this is fairly simple. So it'd be required that you'd be able to do a calculation like that. But where it gets a bit more complicated is a question like this, which was on uh, the unit, excuse me, 2021 examination. Question four uh, in section A. So it's when we compare gravity or gravitational field strengths on one planet compared to another planet, say, for example, Earth, in this case, to the planet called Phobotor, which is orbiting a distant pulsar. So Phobotor is an exoplanet. And we've discovered now thousands of exoplanets. We discovered the first one. I remember when the very first one was reported as discovered back in the 1990s. So Phobotor has a strong field. It's about 18 metres per second squared. And it has a mass four times that of Earth. So a bit of a question there is saying if Earth has a radius of R, which of the following is closest to the radius of Phobotor? Right now, this was in section A, question four. This is a bit of a tricky question, especially for question four in section A. There's no guarantee in section A that every single question out of the 20 is straightforward. And not all students got this right. It was under 50%, much lower, actually. Um, and challenged me a little bit when I first saw it. And it made me think about the way I approach such questions. Typically, what I would do, and I've just prepared this um, uh, approach here, is to compare the two formulas and say, well, look, um, the gravitational field of Phobotor divided by the gravitational field of Earth is just substitute the formulas in for each of them. Where it gets tricky is where you've got to include the subscripts all of the time. And when we're in a, under a bit of pressure in the exam, it can be a bit of a challenge to write neatly. Then we can get a bit bamboozled with the subscripts and everything. Because as you can see, it's a bit of a complicated formula. I just wanted to prepare this ahead of time rather than write it out from scratch. Um, but you can see on the top line here, the G's cancel. Um, but the value we want, the radius of Phobotor, remember, which of the following is the closest to the value of the radius of Phobotor. By the way, you may wish to pause this and have a go at it yourself. Um, and a bit of a spoiler alert on this one as well. If you want to do the exam yourself and wait for it, just maybe park this video and come back to it another time. But uh, in the meantime, um, if we do a bit of algebra, see, instead of a fraction divided by a fraction is the same as multiplying by a reciprocal, uh, just using a bit of algebra, we can get down to this equation here. The radius of Phobotor um, varies with the radius of the Earth with this bit in the middle here. All right, so it's a bit of work to get that algebra done, particularly in the context of an exam. But the ratio of the masses we were told was four, but the inverse ratio of the gravitational fields, well, Earth is 9.8, and we were told uh, that Phobotor has a value of 18. All right, and if you put that all into your calculator, we get that the radius of Phobotor is 1.48 times the radius of Earth for given all the other information we were told. And that's approximately equal to 1.5, which is uh, closest to option B in this case. All right, so that's one way of doing it, just comparing what we call the ratio approach. But because that was a lot of work, and there's no guarantee you're going to get it spot on, um, and it's all for one mark, I thought of an easier or a different approach. And that is to say, to start, we say, look, in general, G equals GM and R squared. We mentioned that at the start. But that means uh, if we take out the equals and make it a statement of proportionality, G varies with M divided by R squared. So it just takes one algebraic step to say that that means R varies with the square root of M all over G. All right, that's just one algebraic step. And then if I move all of this up here, that means R Phobotor as a function of the radius of the Earth is equal to, it's really equal to the direct proportion of their masses, but it's equal to the inverse ratio, okay, GE over G Phobotor uh, of, of the values of their G. And that brings us probably back to what we were at the start. That's um, four to one. 
times 9.8. That wasn't given in the question. We just need to know that it's 9.8 for the Earth. And 18, we were given in the question times the radius of the Earth. And that all comes out to 1.47 if you pop it through your calculator. And that means R Fobator equals uh, 1.5 R because they said I'll let the radius of the Earth equal R. And that's equal to, uh, that comes out to B. All right, so if you're just starting year 12 physics and you go, oh, wow, that's a pretty challenging question. Well, you'd be right. Not everyone got it right, but if you're following this channel, it just means you just want to know uh, how to do more challenging questions reliably. You want to know, hey, is there a way we can do this quickly and reliably? This sort of question comes up with other formats as well, reply to electric fields as well. So uh, just to make it real, that was a challenging exam question, although it looks quite simple. Um, but with practice, you can be good at these ahead of the game. But in general, um, there's the formula for gravitational force fields. Um, you may get just a simple question uh, related to that. So I hope this uh, video serves you, gives you an introduction to uh, gravitational force fields. Uh, not only that, but it gives you insight that if you strike a question that seems a bit more challenging, there's always a way to make it more easy and straightforward and doable every time. All right, so uh, let us know if that is helpful to you. And in the meantime, thanks for watching another physics coaching video.